Okay, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our third lunchtime community update. Make sure I'm, look over here, make sure I'm broadcasting. Looks like we might be good. Okay, so uh, we do this each Thursday at 1230, and we hope that the information we share is helpful and informative. And today we really have two topics to address. I uh, want to address your concerns that you may have related to missing classroom instruction over the last couple of weeks, couple months after our buildings were mandated closed by our governor. And then the second item is we want to discuss uh, three possible calendar options. I believe we mentioned that last week uh, that we would be sharing those with you today. Uh, we will actually be asking you to vote on those beginning tomorrow. So we'll communicate that out to our community and to our parents and to our staff. And so this is something that the Texas Education Agency highly recommended that our district do in order to prepare for uh, next school year and the possibility of additional COVID-19 closures. Uh, so please feel free to ask questions as we go throughout this in the Zoom. There's a Q&A portion on the webinar and then through the Facebook comment section. We'll try to answer those questions as we go. There's staff monitoring that. Uh, and then if we can't get to each one of those, uh, then we'll email a document out with answered questions by the end of this week. So early during our COVID-19 school building closure, the district surveyed all of our parents about the challenges and concerns that you have uh, that were related to our at-home distance learning uh, that we were in for the remainder of the school year. And based on those results, uh, the number one family concern that was shared with us focused on uh, the question of whether your child uh, would be ready for the next grade level. And so our Department of Learning, our principals, uh, as well as a committee of teachers have been working on uh, a plan for the 2021 school year. Uh, they've committed a lot of time and effort to this and what it's gonna look like, uh, given that some of our students may not have mastered new content that was taught during our distance learning time frame. So I'm gonna introduce to you Judy Walling. Ms. Walling is our deputy superintendent. She's over our Department of Learning and she's gonna share with you uh, their plan to ensure that your child uh, has all the content knowledge to be successful next school year and beyond. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Walling. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, our goal is to ensure that all students' gaps are met, but we will not do what, but what we don't want to do is to create new gaps as we start to look at, at the gaps that may have been created during COVID. So we understand that students may need reteaching on the standards from the last six weeks, the last nine weeks, depending on the grading period they were they, they are in. Um, however, it would not be beneficial for our students to repeat the entire last weeks of school. Um, using instructional te techniques such as pre-assessing um, and spiraling of standards to connect a line grade level understanding seamlessly will be most beneficial. Our students will complete a pre-assessment for each unit and utilize ga the GAP implementation tool, which is uh, a new tool that we have that was created by Region 10. Um, and it is aligned with our TEKS resource system, which is our curriculum that we use. This tool will allow us to see which standards from last year are aligned with what is currently being taught in the current year. And it will allow our teachers to address any gaps that, um, that the students have as a result of the uh, COVID uh, remote learning. Furthermore, in the areas of reading and math, uh, we, will, we will utilize our beginning of the year screeners that we have in both of those areas, as well as diagnostic assessments as needed to identify students that are at risk in grades pre-K through eight. Um, our high school courses will also do quick assessments to make sure any student in need is identified. Our teachers will use all of their professional, there'll be some portion of every professional development day this, this, uh, this summer and uh, before school actually begins um, to collaborate on best practices. Um, and they will also have time to talk with other teachers that had these students in the prior year so that we can make everything as uh, seamless as possible. Um, I just want to assure you that we're going to do everything that we possibly can to identify gaps that we have and remediate those gaps while, while continuing to instruct our students in the appropriate grade level or courses. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Walling. And just to reiterate, you know, we recognize that your students may not have been uh, where you want them to be. Uh, they may not have been able to gain all the knowledge post spring break, but we wanna ensure you that we have plans in place uh, for their next stage in their educational career uh, as we enter in the fall. So if you have questions or concerns, you can definitely reach out 
to Miss Walling and her team, and she'll be glad, obviously, that we couldn't go into a lot of detail in the time that we have here, but they can definitely speak to you specifically uh, if you would like answers on that. Uh, speaking of post spring break and our campus building closures, we are preparing for the possibility, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, of another outbreak or the possibility that we may have cases and therefore it requires us to make some decisions about school buildings. Uh, and I mentioned at the beginning, the Texas Education Agency has asked that all of our public school districts review their school calendars and make preparations for closures in the event that something happens in the 2021 school year. So due to that charge, we've developed three calendar options that we wanna to present to you. So following this meeting, beginning tomorrow, we're gonna to send out to all parents a survey to select the option that you feel is best for Midlothian ISD. And so I'd like to go through those options right now so that you can see and hear the difference among all three options. So I'm going to, I'm going to open this up and I will share my screen so that you can see these, but if uh, we will also have that available tomorrow. Okay, the first option that you can see here is um, calendar option A. Uh, this is very much the same calendar that our board adopted back during this school year. So it's really this, we, there's really no change to the calendar with the exception that we have added, you'll see down here in the far right corner for June, we've added COVID emergency closure days in the event that we are required to make up those days. Part of the, part of the um, I guess, planning process is that right now we, don't, we do not have specific guidance from the education agency as to whether or not our remote learning or our distance learning will count as days in school. And so we have to have days built into the calendar in the event that they require us to make those up. If for some reason we are not required to make them up, then we would not be using those days in June. Or if for some reason uh, we're not required to close during the school year, then we would not be using those days during June. So this, this one is very simply our current calendar with two weeks added on at the end. Also within this calendar, there are two bad weather makeup days. Uh, April 2nd and March 12th. Those days could be used as COVID makeup days if we don't use them for bad weather. And then we also have a few days built in just based on extra minutes in our calendar. So we have a little bit over two weeks worth of days in this calendar in the event that we had to close. The next item, the next calendar is calendar option B. And you'll notice on this one, it starts one week earlier. So right now we're scheduled to start August the 18th. This one would require our students to start August 11th. And then you'll notice down here in June, they would actually be getting out one week later. So what that does for us is it builds in two weeks of possible makeup days into the actual school calendar. So those have been built in. If you look right here in January, early January, right after our Christmas holiday, uh, starting January the 4th, we have a week's worth of COVID makeup days. So if we were to miss in August, September, October, November, then those days would be utilized as makeup days. So they are on here really as instructional days in the event that we miss. If we don't happen to miss COVID days during that time frame and are not or and or not required to make them up, then those days would be school holidays. We did the same thing right here in March. Uh, after our spring break, starting March 22nd, we added a week there. So that allows us to have flexibility. If we miss days, then they would be made up there. It might be anywhere from one to five days there. If we don't, if we're not required to make them up, or if we don't miss, then that would be a two week spring break for our, for our students and our staff and our community. And you'll notice there that the, the, uh, the end date would be June 4th. So calendar B is really starting a week earlier, ending a week later with two weeks built in uh, for possible makeup days. It allows you to plan during the, during the school year as to when those days might be made up. Option B is another version of that, but basically on this one, the start date is kept the same. So that would be August 18th. We keep our same start date now as, as, as uh, adopted by our board, but we go ahead then and still add in those two weeks. So we still have the week after Christmas, after the Jan in the January holiday timeframe there, January the 4th. So if we don't miss, the students would have a three week Christmas holiday, and then the same thing for March, it would be the two week spring break. But instead of taking, adding, starting a week earlier and ending a week late, we're starting at the adopted time. And so we have to add those two weeks on to the end. So calendar C would be a dismissal date or excuse me, end of year date of June the 11th. So hopefully that, I mean, I think they're, they're, very, they're very clear, they're very simple. It's just basically building in, we were looking at building in a couple of weeks so that parents can plan 
and so that staff can plan of makeup days. The question is, when would we put those in there? And then how do we adjust our start and end date? So you will, uh, you will see more about this, more detail tomorrow in the email that goes out. And uh, we will try to uh, explain that in the email, but I want to take the time today just so that you could see um, kind of where we are with that. Um, so as I stated, you're gonna receive an, an email tomorrow with this, so please vote. Uh, in the meantime, if you have questions or comments or concerns, you can email or call. Uh, we have many individuals working on this calendar uh, and looking at it for, for the future of our district. Uh, I'm gonna take just a minute here and uh, see if there's anything. Dr. Carpenter, is there anything, or Ms. Walling, anything that you feel like we need to address before we end this session? I will address a couple of things real quick off the Zoom Q&A. We had a question about the plan for children returning to school five days a week or staggering for, for next fall. Um, our, we're actually beginning phase two of that process with our task force. Um, and we're going to be putting that, um, drafting that reopening plan over the course of the next few weeks. We are waiting on TEA's additional guidance because right now all we have is the summer guidelines that they're allowing for any type of summer school in the buildings. So we are still waiting on some guidance there, but we're working on drafting a plan for every day, but also for staggering days. And that is a great question because I know there was some confusion last week when we talked, we're talking about calendars right now. We're just talking about days that start date and end date. And then what those days are going to actually look like. Uh, we're, we're working on with, uh, like Dr. Carpenter mentioned, the task forces, but we're also awaiting guidance from TEA and from the Department of Health and others as to what the requirements are going to be when we return in the fall. So we can't make final decisions until we receive some guidance from the education agency moving forward. Uh, but we, we have multiple plans in place for that. So I appreciate, uh, appreciate the question because that's definitely something we need to clarify. All we're talking about right now are starting end dates for our school year. Okay, I don't, uh, if there's not any other additional questions, like I said at the beginning, we will go through these and we will follow up with responses and send that out to you as, as parents and community members. I wanna thank you for being on here uh, today. I hope that it's beneficial. Like I said, we're gonna continue this throughout the summer and we hope that it's valuable information. We want to honor your time and, and try to provide insight into things that are going on within the school district. So thank you for your participation. Uh, and that concludes our session for today. Have a great afternoon.